This powerful x-ray machine, a tool of medical science, is being used for healing purposes. The radiant energy it emits is able to kill all living tissue within its beam, both sick and healthy cells of the human body. Its invisible rays so highly penetrative that protective shielding with lead glass windows must be used. X-rays are much like the gamma rays of radioactive fallout. We began our picture with X-rays because you are all to some degree familiar with their effects. But radioactive fallout is another matter. If you're like most people, it creates many questions in your mind. And you have doubtless read or heard some falsehoods and misconceptions. This film will tell you what you need to know about fallout so that if our country is ever subjected to a nuclear attack, you can help yourself and your family to survive its dangers. For fallout is probably the most dangerous product of nuclear disaster in terms of the number of people who could be affected. It is also the one from which we are best able to protect ourselves. Let's examine what happens when a nuclear weapon is exploded near the Earth. First, there is blast, or the pressure wave created by the explosion, along with heat, the most intense ever created on Earth. Both will extend great distances from the point of the explosion, from 1 to 20 or 25 miles, depending on the size of the weapon. However, the further away you are from the site of the explosion, the less are the chances you will suffer the fatal effects of blast and heat. There is yet a third immediate result of a nuclear detonation, initial radiation. The final effect is residual radiation, the main concern of this film, or radiation that follows the explosion and one that may remain at high altitudes for some time before falling back to Earth. What exactly is residual radiation? Our sun, like other stellar bodies of the universe, is a giant nuclear furnace burning at temperatures of millions of degrees while emitting various types of radiation. Among these are gamma rays, shorter in wavelength than their closest neighbor, X-rays. The Earth's atmosphere prevents these radiations dangerous to the health of man and animal from reaching our planet. However, when a nuclear weapon is exploded, man is creating on Earth, in the splitting of atomic nuclei, his own nuclear furnace to produce the gamma and beta radiations of outer space. Let's see now just how this radiation is created. At the time of the burst, vast amounts of dirt, stone, and other debris vaporized by the heat of the explosion, are sucked up into the rising cloud. As the mushroom cloud forms, these particles are made radioactive, for as they cool and condense, they are contaminated by residue from the bomb. These particles, when they fall back to Earth, are what we call radioactive fallout. Can you or anyone else predict with accuracy the pattern by which fallout particles will return to Earth? The answer is no, for fallout will depend on the number, size, and location of nuclear weapons exploded and the direction of upper air currents. Let's, for example, explore the fallout produced by one of these nuclear weapons. It sends its column of radioactive material up to 80,000 feet, or about 16 miles or more above the Earth. Here, the radioactive particles, beginning to drift downward, are at the mercy of upper air currents that vary from day to day. Descending at various altitudes through many different layers of air that may be moving at varying speeds and directions. Thus, winds on the surface of the Earth give little help in determining the direction or the occurrence of fallout. 
Meteorologists, with their special instruments, however, can appraise altitudes as well as the total distance fallout will be carried. In a nuclear attack, keep tuned to your local radio station. It will keep you posted where fallout is taking place and its approximate amount. Though you may be able to see this dust once it reaches the Earth, you cannot see or detect the radiation it emits without the aid of radiological instruments. Nor can you taste, smell, or feel this radiation. Why is fallout so dangerous to human and animal life? Because each particle gives off radiation as if it were a tiny X-ray machine. This radiation consists mainly of gamma rays, which are extremely penetrating. Like X-rays, gamma rays are able to injure, even destroy the cells of our body if we are exposed to a sufficient dosage long enough, or if we eat or drink material contaminated by fallout particles. Exposure to gamma rays can make you sick, can even cause death. However, no matter how long one may be exposed to fallout, he does not become radioactive, nor can anyone catch radiation sickness from him like a contagious disease. In fact, this radiation cannot make anyone or anything radioactive. Now let us suppose that fallout has descended on this can. We'll let salt represent fallout dust. The particles don't go through the tin. The radiation does, but radiation is harmless to all except living material. It has no effect on the food inside. Now, if you wipe away the fallout particles, or better still, wash them away, the food inside cannot be contaminated and is perfectly safe to eat. The same is true of all foods and liquids that have been protected by packagings or containers even the thinnest layer of cellophane. If you don't swallow the dust, there is no ill effect. If water for washing is in short supply, canned goods that may have been exposed to fallout can be handled safely with a piece of paper towel. Use one sheet of paper to lift the can and turn it upside down. There is no dust on the bottom. Now dispose of the paper. Wipe the sides of the can with a new piece of towel. And don't forget to put the contaminated paper in a covered receptacle. Now open the clean top. There will be no harmful particles in the food itself. A sealed loaf of bread that has been exposed to fallout can be salvaged in a similar manner. Turn the loaf upside down to expose the bottom, which will be clear of dust. Then dispose of the towel. Now insert a sharp knife through the wax paper at the center of the loaf and cut upwards, making a slot four or five inches lengthwise. Insert your fingers through the slot and rip the paper slowly open. The bread can be safely removed to a clean place. Finally, dispose of the wax paper. Contaminated vegetables, such as potatoes, can be paired like this. Use a clean piece of newspaper, and working first in one corner, cut off one end. Move to a clean surface of the paper and peel in this manner. Move to another area of the paper and remove the other end. Dispose of all peelings and soiled paper carefully. After handling any contaminated food containers or vegetables, wash your hands. Fallout dust is dangerous, but it can be dealt with by following safe procedures. There's another widespread legend. 
the fear that fallout spells death to all life on Earth. The plain fact is that even if a great number of nuclear weapons were exploded, the resulting fallout would cover only a small area of the world's total land mass. The real concern then is this. If we are in that area, how do we protect ourselves? Like x-rays, radiation from fallout can go through almost every kind of building material. Over 99% would pass through glass. Sixty-six percent through wood sheathing. Fifty percent through a brick veneer wall. But only one percent of gamma radiation would penetrate 18 inches of concrete. And though it's not a building material, it's important to know that only 1% would pass through 25 inches of earth. Quite aside from the shielding effect of building materials, the intensity of radiation decreases with the square of the distance from the source. Thus, 10 feet away from a particle of fallout, the radiation rate is only 1% of that encountered at a distance of one foot. Other things being equal, the central parts of a building are safer. The radiation rate, or the intensity from fallout, decreases with the passage of time. In fact, for every sevenfold increase in time, the radiation will be reduced by a factor of 10. That means that at seven hours after the explosion, the radiation level will be about 10% of its intensity at one hour. At 49 hours, it will be about 1%. Within two weeks, the radiation rate can be expected to decay to about one-tenth of 1%. One Therefore, the most vital period to seek protection from fallout is the first few days after nuclear attack even more so the first few hours. But remember, even with the passage of time, a low level of radiation can be dangerous. That is why you may need to remain within a sheltered area for as long as two weeks. These then are the three basic factors in protection against fallout. Time, distance, and shielding. Time, meaning the longer you stay protected from fallout, the safer you will be. Distance, or the further away you get from fallout, the safer you will be. Shielding, meaning the more mass or weight you put between yourself and fallout, the safer you will be. You have often seen this sign on buildings. It means that indoors is a public fallout shelter one of many and various kinds of buildings in your community that are similarly identified. Architects and engineers have carefully surveyed the shielding qualities of these areas to ensure they offer a minimum protection factor of 40 or more. Meaning that, in the event of fallout from a nuclear explosion, the mass and weight this shelter will place between you and the source of radiation will make you at least 40 times safer than if you were outdoors. Each of these shelters will hold at least 50 people and has been stocked by the government with austere supplies. Food, water, sanitation equipment, medical kits, and radiological instruments. But what about millions who live in suburbs or rural areas, often far beyond quick walking distance of the nearest public shelter? With foresight, you can have a home shelter for the protection of your family, built from specifications and cost estimates for various types of shelters provided by your local civil defense office. 
The home shelter should be stocked with supplies of food and water sufficient for two weeks. Here you are afforded time, distance, and shielding if and when fallout so dangerous to human health should ever occur in your community. Just how much radiation can you receive without becoming sick? We measure exposure to gamma radiation from fallout in units called Renkin. They're the same units used to measure X-rays, named for Wilhelm Conrad Renkin, the discoverer of X-rays. People and animals may develop radiation sickness if they have been exposed to large amounts of radiation over a short period of time. Few people become sick who have been exposed to a total radiation dose of 100 Renkins or less. However, exposure to more than 300 Renkins over a period of a few days will cause sickness, may cause death. And if you receive an exposure of 600 Renkins in that same period of time, death is almost certain. How can you tell just how much radiation you've been exposed to? These are the instruments commonly used to detect and measure radiation. They are part of the equipment supplied to the radiological monitoring team of every public shelter. With them, you can determine not only the total amounts of radiation received, but also the dose rate per unit of time or the dose rate in Renkins per hour. This is the dosimeter, conveniently shaped to be worn on one's person at all times. It is able to measure the total accumulated radiation exposure in Renkin. The charger adjusts the dosimeter to a zero reading prior to its use with each separate exposure to radiation building cumulatively on the dosimeter gauge so that a reading of the total dose is available at any given time. Next, the Geiger counter. This instrument measures radiation in fractions of Renkins per hour within or outside the shelter. Finally, the survey meter able to measure higher intensities of radiation that may exist outside the shelter. For home shelters, detection and measuring instruments are available from commercial sources. However, most householders will rely chiefly on their portable radios to receive readings as they are taken by civil defense monitoring teams. If there is a nuclear attack, and you survive the initial effects of an explosion, you will have at least a half hour to get to a public or home fallout shelter. Therefore, to be safe from radiation sickness, get into the best available shelter as soon as possible. Once there, stay put, because each time you're exposed to fallout radiation over a period of a few days, the dosage continues to build until it reaches dangerous quantity. If you're among those compelled to travel through a fallout area on essential errands, there are certain rules to follow. Protect your body with boots or rubbers, gloves, headgear, and outer clothing that can be removed before you re-enter the shelter. On returning, brush off the rest of your clothing thoroughly, as well as any parts of your body that may have been exposed to fallout. If sufficient water is available, wash your face and hands carefully. Remember, these are the dosages of radiation as they affect human health. 100 Renkins, little or no effect. 300 Renkins, sickness or death. 600 Renkins, death. Recovery from radiation sickness is nothing new. Patients who are treated by x-rays routinely experience this sickness and get over it. Of course, the dosages they receive are carefully measured. Just as in combating the virus of the common cold, your general state of health will often govern how quickly you can throw off the effects of mild or moderate 
radiation sickness. In an emergency situation where there is no doctor, always treat radiation sickness by treating its symptoms. In fact, these symptoms are often similar to those produced by extreme anxiety or emotional stress. So it's best not to try to determine their cause. I repeat, do not try to diagnose. Merely treat the symptoms, just as you would if they were the result of any other type of illness. These are the symptoms of mild as well as moderate radiation sickness, one or more of which may appear shortly after exposure to fallout. Fatigue, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, prostration. The treatment is rest. For nausea, you may give the patient any of the commercial preparations that settle an upset stomach, or one half teaspoon of baking soda in a cup of water. Tea and other hot liquids may be helpful. When a high fever is present, apply cold wet packs. Aspirin also tends to reduce a fever. In severe radiation sickness, along with the early symptoms, other symptoms may appear a week or more after exposure. Recovery is possible, but it'll take longer. The symptoms are diarrhea, inflammation of mouth and throat, loss of hair. For treatment, control the diarrhea and give aspirin and warm water gargles. People are naturally alarmed at the thought of bodily changes that may follow severe radiation sickness, such as loss of hair or sterility. These conditions are usually temporary and will disappear with recovery. So I hope we've dispelled another commonly held myth. You can get over radiation sickness just as you get over many others. Nevertheless, don't minimize the danger of fallout. Remember, its effects are cumulative. The only real protection against it is to take shelter. Now, let's review some of the outstanding facts we have learned in this brief exploration of a vitally important subject. Fallout is composed of trillions of particles of dust that are made radioactive by residue from the nuclear weapon during the aftermath of the explosion. In a nuclear attack, depend on your local radio station to tell you where fallout is taking place. You may be able to see some of the fallout dust when it reaches the Earth, but you cannot taste, smell, or feel the radiation itself. The gamma rays given off by fallout are able to injure or destroy the living cells of our body if we are exposed long enough. Food or water in containers that prevent contamination by fallout dust is perfectly safe. Radiation is harmful only to living tissues. Packaged foods that have been exposed to fallout should be opened carefully. By following proper procedures, you can eat such foods without danger to health. Radiation can pass through most building materials, but its intensity is diminished in proportion to the weight and mass of the material or the shielding. The intensity also decreases with distance from the fallout. The radiation rate will decrease or decay rapidly with time. It is most dangerous in the first few days after explosion. Thus, the three basic factors that protect you from fallout radiation are time, distance, and shielding. You should know the location of the nearest public shelter in your community. Inside it, you will be at least 40 times safer from fallout than you would be outdoors. And it has been stocked with supplies to sustain its occupants for up to two weeks. If you're not within walking distance of a public shelter, you can provide a satisfactory home shelter for your family. Radiation is invisible, but we have accurate instruments with which to measure it in Rencon units.
The dosimeter can be worn on the person and measures the accumulated radiation exposure, the total dose at any given time. The Geiger counter measures radiation in fractions of Rankins per hour, inside or outside the shelter. The survey meter is used to measure the higher intensities of radiation that may be present outside the shelter. Assuming that you have the protection of a good shelter within a half hour after nuclear attack, you will probably have little or no radiation sickness. If there are victims who appear to have radiation sickness, do not diagnose. Treat the symptoms. Perhaps the most important thing you have learned is to see the danger in its true perspective. Make no mistake, nuclear attack would be a terrible catastrophe. Millions of our people would be killed by the initial blast and heat. Millions more would be threatened by death from radioactive fallout. But that is a threat that can be combated can with knowledge, preparation, and courage be faced and conquered. We began our picture with x-rays because you are all to some degree familiar with their effects. But radioactive fallout is another matter. If you're like most people, it creates many questions in your mind, and you have doubtless read or heard some falsehoods and misconception. This film will tell you what you need to know about fallout so that if our country is ever subjected to a nuclear attack, you can help yourself and your family to survive its dangers. For fallout is probably the most dangerous product of nuclear disaster in terms of the number of people who could be affected. It is also the one from which we are best able to protect ourselves. Let's examine what happens when a nuclear weapon is exploded near the Earth. First, there is blast, or the pressure wave created by the explosion, along with heat, the most intense ever created on the main concern of this film, or radiation that follows the explosion and one that may remain at high altitudes for some time before falling back to Earth. What exactly is residual radiation? Our sun, like other stellar bodies of the universe, is a giant nuclear furnace burning at temperatures of millions of degrees while emitting various types of radiation. Among these are gamma rays, Earth. Both will extend great distances from the point of the explosion, from 1 to 20 or 25 miles, depending on the size of the weapon. However, the further away you are from the site of the explosion, the less are the chances you will suffer the fatal effects of blast and heat. There is yet a third immediate result of a nuclear detonation, initial radiation. The final effect is residual radiation. This powerful x-ray machine, a tool of medical science, is being used for healing purposes. The radiant energy it emits is able to kill all living tissue within its beam, both sick and healthy cells of the human body. Its invisible ray is so highly penetrative that protective shielding with lead glass windows must be used. X-rays are much like the gamma rays of radioactive fallout. <laughs>